Hey, Tech Talk, Jim Malone here, coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. It's a Friday. I hope everyone's doing well out there. I know I am. Uh, almost ready for the weekend here. Um, interesting. We had an interesting day in the market yesterday. Here we go. Got my camera on. <laughs> kind of little technical difficulties here. But anyways, it is Friday. It's number 90, show number 90. Some interesting stuff for you today. Have an options play on audio code, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be seeing that here. And then I'm going to probably send it out on my free trade alerts. So if you are interested in joining the free trade alerts and you're on TikTok, real easy to do. All you have to do is to go to my profile and then click the link banner and just click that and uh, you will get uh, a link to my um, subscription page. So just go ahead. It's all free. And I just wanted to get into it. We, it looks like we have some people here already. That's great. Let me just go through the slides here real quick. And then I'll start answering questions. We're live today on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Periscope, and Twitch. So if you're looking on Periscope, it's pscp.tv slash telestratingcorp. On YouTube, it's youtube.com slash floor. Facebook, I'm Facebook groups and also pages. There's a page for Dallas Trading Floor. And also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor. So here we go. Um, as you can see, we're marketing is still in a confirmed uptrend. It's sort of amazing. We did have a bit of a sell-off on Thursday, it is a little bit weak on some of the some of the uh, issues are kind of weak, but we're still in a confirmed uptrend. The Dow Jones is down a little bit when this slide was taken, but both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are up. Now, the NASDAQ is sitting, it seems like it has resistance right about that 10,500 level. That seems to be kind of where it's getting resistance. Um, at least that's what I have been seeing. So it kind of it's kind of punching up against that and then sort of backing off. But it's still, you know, there's still money going into the text, if you can believe that. Um, just wanted to show you, this is a very interesting psychological market indicator that I like to show every once in a while. It's called the put call volume spread. And what's interesting about this is that this can sometimes indicate if we're at a change in the market uh, condition. But what this shows is that, no, we're not. Uh, there was the, according to the bull call ratio, we're still bullish on this market. It's hard to believe that we are because, you know, golly, it's just, it just seems like it keeps going up. But, you know, what can you say? You can't, uh, <laughs> you can't fight the market. So, so don't fight the market. Not time to be short right yet. I'm sure it will be, but not right now. The spider, again, 321, it is up today. Just barely, just 36 cents. But what's interesting is it's holding above that 320 line. So kind of interesting. It's trying to see, trying to see figure out where it's going here. Still not up to the, the um, 340 level where it was prior to the, the down draw in the market. But it's very, very close to kind of where it's where it um, you know kind of kind of where it was going. So it's we're in a range, we're almost back all the way from the March 23rd low all the way back to about 340. So it's kind of amazing uh, we're, we're there on the spider. So it does seem to be getting a little bit of resistance. So we may be going sideways more, a little bit more in this market. The really important one is the QQQ. It's down a little bit today. It seems like it's, eh, it's, kind, it's getting a little bit of, it's getting a little bit worn out, it seems like. But 258 is good. Anything above 200 uh, and 50 is pretty good. Uh, for the for the QQQ now, of course, everybody knows the QQQ represents basically the Nasdaq 100. These are the very big big growth stocks like Netflix and like um, Amazon and Microsoft's in here and just about everything. Everything that's really doing well is in is in, is in this uh, QQQ. So uh, definitely, it's a little off a little bit today, but it seems to be holding kind of steady above the $250 price. Um, and of course, the one that I really wanted to show you is the Dow Jones, the diamond. The uh, This is an ETF composed of the Dow Jones 30. There's only 30 stocks in this one, but they tend to be the very biggest. It's about 266. This has been the laggard 
in the last few weeks. And it, it's it's kind of it, it's it's moving moving nicely, but I don't think we're you know we're seeing everybody's saying there's going to be a movement towards value. I, I just don't see it because of the weakness in the Dow Jones. So I just I just don't see it. Now I'm going to show you an interesting trade that you might be interested in. This is a very interesting company called Audio Codes Limited, and it is based in Israel. But it is not a brand new company. It started. It's a. It's over. It's almost twenty years old, I believe. But it is starting to get some real good traction. And basically, what this is, is this is just about at a uh, buy point here. The buy point is forty sixteen. That's the proper entry on a cup and handle, which is the best chart pattern. Okay. Um, basically, um, here's the thing. It's it's it's. It's done quite well, and it's going to be reporting. Now, typically when we go into reporting season, I like to do these spreads, and the reason is, is because it limits the risk a little bit rather than going and buying the shares and then, you know, having it back off, kind of like what, kind of like what happened with Netflix yesterday. Um, when you're going into the earnings season, you kind of have it, you, to limit your risk. It's better to do these spreads. And, and this is a bull call spread, meaning that we're going to purchase the lower strike price uh, option, and then we're going to sell the upper price uh, strike price option. This gives us a very good range for it to, um, to, to maneuver in. The earnings for this one is going to be on the 28th, which is a Tuesday, and it's coming up. Uh, so here's what I have done for this particular option. And I'm going to, by the way, this is available on my trade alerts. So just sign up for the trade alerts and I will show you, I will send this out to you so you can really get it in detail. You know, here it's just on the show. Basically the way this trade works is uh, this is a basically about, um, this is going to cost about a thousand dollars out of pocket, but hopefully we'll get it all back very quickly in about 19 days. And here's how it works. You buy three contracts of the June 21st, 2020, 35 strike at about $4.35 when this slide was made. And then you're going to sell three of the August 30, 21st, 2020, um, 45 strikes at uh, 75 cents. Basically what happens is, as you can see, that comes out to an out of the pocket uh, to enter this trade of about uh, about a thousand and uh, and and thousand eighty dollars. Now, basically, this de it depends on where it's going to be in terms. You know, where it's going to be is dependent on you know what you can get the fill for. But this is kind of an idea of what it is. I have a order in right now. I'm waiting to see if I got a fill on this. But uh, as you can see, we're in the green basically. Uh, so. Here's here's the way here's the way it works. The break even on this trade is 38.66. The maximum loss, of course, is the entire amount, but that doesn't happen until it falls below $35 at the expiration. The potential gain on this one, and this is one thing I would really have to show you here because I'm kind of having to squint to see it, uh, is is about um, $1,014 if it is 42 or above, and at the maximum. It's it's a little bit higher than that. I just didn't put it. I just didn't have time to put it on here. But the maximum gain on this is uh, is about thirteen hundred dollars uh, on this on this trade. So, and I think it's a fairly high likelihood trade. So it's a nice one to enter into. Again, I will have this available for you. Uh, I'm going to annotate it a little bit to show you exactly the the um, the if if I get a fill the exact numbers on it. This is the this is the sample that I did prior to the trade because I don't have a fill yet. But when I have a fill, I'll show you my, my numbers here. This is my current portfolio. Um, I did not sell Netflix, interestingly enough, even though it was drawn down tremendously. But I was fortunate I got in right at the pivot. When I bought Netflix, I bought it at, um, at, at 459, which was the pivot on it. That's why these pivots are so important. If you can buy at these pivots, or 5% above the pivots, basically that's the buy range, then you get this downwards protection in case there's a snapback on, on, the, uh, on the stock motion. And this is what happened with, with Netflix. It moved down, didn't have quite the results that they wanted to, but then it's, it's moved up in after hours. Now, I probably will hold this again because I have an option. I sold a 595 call for today on that. It's expiring worthless, which is good for me because I got the money up front and it expired worthless. So I'm probably going to sell another call, probably out another week or so 
on that and hopefully pick up some more some more money there. I'm not going to sell Netflix because I do still I'm still bullish on the name. Um, Vive Systems, I'm going to be sold out of this one today because my call has I'm going to be called out of this. Teladoc Health, the same thing. Interestingly enough, Blink Charging has done well and it's going up. It's a very inexpensive stock. I was in basically for this, basically for this price, 640 is where I got in, but I did sell some calls on it. So hopefully it'll go up a little bit more. I'm going to be out of Maxam today. Uh, today, this was a spread. This is a bull call spread that I did. Uh, basically, um, you know, basically a, a 65, uh, 70 spread. I think we're going to get almost all the money for it. And of course, I'm back in Tesla, and I was in at 14.65, I believe, uh, is where I bought in. And then I also sold a call on that. So it just gives you kind of a quick idea of where it's going there. So. Now, <laughs> now, without much ado, going to get to everyone's questions. All right. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, hey, 11 people are watching. <laughs> That's a good thing, man. Um, please tell your friends. I need, I, need more, I need more viewers here. I need more viewers here. Um, but just so I uh, can show everybody, um, if you want to go ahead and sign up for the trade alerts, um, super simple. Oops. Well, it would be if I got it right. There we go. Okay. It, super simple to sign up for the trade alerts, DallasTradingFloor.com. And then just, if you want to do a comment too, I try to answer those comments. Sometimes I don't get to them until late at night. So please don't hold me to getting back to you in, you know, in 30 minutes. Sometimes I get a little bit busy, but I try to go to everyone and, and uh, try to try to answer them as best I can while I'm sitting in front of the um you know, while I'm sitting in front of Netflix watching watching the Tiger King. So I do that at night and I answer, uh, answer email. I live such an exciting life. Um, but, uh, okay, so great. Let's see. Now, what's the first comment? Oh, hey, man. Thanks, David and Rose. Good. To see. I'm glad you're watching me, actually. Somebody's out there. Hey, I'm basically all cash right now. Very eager to take positions. What do you think of Shopify and RDFN? Boy, I love Shopify. It's a little bit. It's, it's the the thing. The thing you have to be careful a little bit, Tian here, uh, just because not not because it's actually very good to be all cash because I think there's going to be some some very good opportunities coming up here. But what we want to do here is we want to buy on the buy points as close as we can get to them, because that's where you're going to get your 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 advantage when you, when you do that. So let me see if I can bring up. A um, let me see if I can bring up a chart and let's like take a look at those two that you indicated you are interested in RDFN and Shopify. Let's look at RDFN first and then Shopify second. So let me look at RDFN real quick. RDFN. Let's see if I can come up with something for you there. Yeah, Redfin. Okay. This is a not a bad chart. It's not it's not a great chart. Let's go to the weekly before I pull it up here. Uh, let me show you the weekly. Um, I do have a little concern on this chart, on this Redfin chart, because it um, and the way the way it's looking, because it it does it's it's pulled back a little bit, but it's still got a ninety seven. <laughs> it's got it's got a ninety seven relative strength. That's very good relative strength. Uh, it's 77 composite, which is good. I like to buy them at 80 or better, though. I think Shopify is your better bet, obviously. It's a lot more expensive stock. Shopify is just on fire, and I think it's, you know, Shopify is what powers a lot of the non, you know, Amazon sites, and it's just a tremendous company in a lot of ways. As a matter of fact, I think on CNBC they had an interview with the uh, – with the uh, CEO today, I, I really very high on that, but I do like uh, I, I I do like Redfin. I just don't think it's in a viable pattern right now. I think this is a watch list stock for you, and probably not a viable pattern at at, at the moment. Just because I don't think it I don't think it has quite um, shown a base, and um, that's one of the things I be, you have to be really careful when you're buying is that you best buy off of a viable base like a cup and handle or a cup or um, a, th a three a three week tight or something like that because by doing that you're going to limit your risk. If we have what happened with Netflix where it, where it moved way up in anticipation of earnings and then the earnings weren't quite there, it snapped back, but it didn't ball, fall below its pivot. It 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 fall it fell right almost to the pivot and then it just started moving back up. That's the one thing. That's 
reason we want to buy off of really nice chart patterns. I don't think Redfin is in that in in that pattern right now, uh, but I do think that it's a watch list stock. It's a good stock. Um, let's look at Shopify, and that's S H O P. Um, I, this is a tremendous stock. The problem with this is that it's just getting way expensive, and it and it and at the moment it's a little it's downtrending a little bit. I, you know, I just I don't know if we have an opportunity uh, to buy this one. This is another one that you want to watch list. I know that I know that you're you're in all in cash and you want to do something there, but but thing is, uh, and it did go up six dollars and it's a ninety eight composite rating. It's just got a lot going for it. I just want to see. I just I would like to see um, a viable chart pattern. I'd like to see a cup. I'd like to see a cup with a handle. And it, it, right now, it doesn't have that particular pattern. So let's go to the weekly. I'll show you. It doesn't quite have that pattern. Yeah, you can see it just needs to settle in a little bit. And then I think it's probably going even higher. Um, but it's a tremendous stock. But it just doesn't have a viable pattern right now. I'm not saying that you can't buy it, but it's a little bit risky at this level. Uh, I think it's a good, good time to wait for a viable pattern on Shopify. So I, I, have to, I have to go. I can't say I love both of them. I wish I did. Uh, but I really appreciate your, um, your, uh, your I really appreciate that question. What do you think of KL? I, I kind of love KL, actually. I've gotten stopped at this a bunch of times. But I think that KL, for everybody out there that doesn't know this, is Kirkland Lakes Gold. It's a Canadian-based uh, gold miner that I particularly like. Oh, look at that. Yeah, okay. And I, I think, it, you know, it has a viable chart pattern right now. And so that might be something that you might want to look at. I really like it. Um, let's I'm just show you the chart on it. And I'm going to show you the, the, the weekly chart so we can kind of get an idea of that. Yeah, this is, it's forming, it's forming, um, it, even though this was, this was drawn down here, it's forming a cup so it's not quite a cup with handle, which is the best. It's sort of a sort of a cup pattern, which is excellent. It's got a it's gonna got a composite rating of 98, which is, you know, there's only 99. That's the only thing better. Um, I, I I very much like this at the and I like it at this price. I I, I like uh, I like KL at, at this at this price level. Now, here's the thing: the buy zone, we're a little bit shy of the buy zone. The buy zone is about 45.20. And the reason I say that is because that's the higher high. You want a stock like this to buy it on the higher high. So um, if you can if you can hold on, uh, it's probably a good idea to watch list this thing and wait until it moves just a tad higher uh, at about um, I'm so oh goodness gracious. Let me see if I can get that number there for you. Yeah, wait, just a little tad higher. It, uh, I think the buy point is going to be about 49.75. That's going to be the proper buy point. But um, yeah, it's 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 not quite there yet. But if it does go above that, I think it's you know well worth uh, well worth buying. I'm very li I I really like KL. I think it's of the gold miners. I think it's really one of the best out there. Also NET and CRNC. Let's look at NET real quick. Um, just want to look at this. See if it's got a buyable uh, pattern. Here, uh, oh, Cloudflare, yeah, very nice, very nice. Um, again, doesn't quite have a doesn't quite have a a buy. It doesn't have an optimal pattern, but at, it's a good price, thirty 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 seven dollars. Um, but it still is not a buy pattern. You really need to see this confirm its its movement. It needs really to be above forty two before it's viable. Um, I definitely think it's a watch list. It's a little bit low in the composite rating of 82. It's still viable at 82 or better, but um, I, you know I would watch this system. So I wouldn't buy this one right away, uh, but I definitely would watch those systems. If this one goes above, uh, if this one goes above 42, I think it's you know it's really viable. Um, CRNC. So let me look at CRNC real quick. Give you an idea on that one, CRNC, and oh, okay. Um, hmm. Okay, that's interesting. It's a good space. I really like the space. This is the AI driving, you know, the AI for cars. It's a little bit. 
it's this is a this is an IPO. These are a little harder to buy. Here's a, here's the thing I like to do on IPOs. I typically don't like to buy an IPO until at least it's been out for three months because if you buy it a little bit shy of that, it can be it can be very difficult. This is in IPOs basically go through a stage. They 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 IPO. They move up. There's a lot of excitement, and then a lot of the original people that got in that flipped it, they get out. It goes down. That's just, this is a classic IPO pattern, and then it moves up. And then right now, and that's people getting into it. And then hopefully, we're going to we're going to see it 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 settle here a little bit, move forward, and then hopefully it'll be picked up by the analysts. And if it does, then you you will. It looks like it's already been picked up by the analysts based on this, you know, up four point four one percent. So this this is a good one. I um, I think this is definitely viable. I think I think this is definitely viable at the level that it's at now. I think it's definitely viable. I wouldn't go with a. I wouldn't go with a whole full position though. I would only go with a half position. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you ha if you take your entire investment portfolio, let's say you have ten thousand dollars, you divide that by eight, you're going to get twelve thousand. You're going to get one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars for each full position. So with this one, I would only buy if if I had ten thousand dollar portfolio, that was the value of it. I would only buy a half position to start, and that half position. Would be approximately um, would it would be approximately six hundred and seventy five dollars worth, or if you're looking at this, uh, not that many shares. It would it would be um, about twenty shares of this. If if for a ten thousand dollar portfolio, again a half position. If it confirm if it conforms and it moves higher, then you want to go and put another half on uh, position. So that's I think this is a viable stock. Very very good. Thank you for the question. Um, let's see. Oh, IBM. Please talk about IBM earnings. Boy, I wish I knew more about IBM. Here's the problem with IBM. IBM used to be absolutely the, the king of kings when it came to everything, and uh, earnings included. Now, one of the good things about IBM is that it does have very, very strong earnings, uh, even though it's a declining company. Um, and and I and I think that's that's worth noting on this. This is more of a dividend play than anything else. There's several things I don't like about this. It's got a composite rating of 37. It's really not, unfortunately, in a top group. It's in the services, uh, computer tech services group. But here's the thing: it's been moving beyond above the um, above the 40 day uh, the uh, 40 day moving average. So I'm going to switch over to the weekly chart here to kind of get a, a view of it. Here's the problem with IBM. I don't think I would be in IBM right now. I think it's got a lot of ground to, co uh, to cover. I wouldn't buy this until it had exceeded about 155 in terms of price. And the reason I wouldn't is because I do think that there's a risk that it will move, it'll move lower. This chart is a downward trending chart. And so that's something that I think you have to be very careful at. Let's take a look when earnings are. I don't know offhand. Yeah, they're on the 20th. So I don't know what, um, and that will be, let's see, the 17th today. Uh, okay, so that's Monday. It's probably after the bell on Monday. Um, you know, I don't think the earnings are going to be stellar. Uh, so I, I just, I wouldn't hold this one through earnings. I just, I wouldn't. Um, if, if you're if you're in the stock right now, and I don't know if you're in the stock, my advice to you would be to sell your position prior to earnings, and then if if it's good earnings and it picks up on the other side, then buy it back. But I don't want I wouldn't hold this one through earnings. There could be a disappointment on this one, and if there is, unfortunately, the way the the way the market is right now, it will this stock will be hammered if. They disappoint on earnings, so not don't take the risk. Sell it before the earnings, and if it's good, then buy back the stock. But don't hold it through earnings. That's my main thing. Don't hold this through through earnings because I think you could be very disappointed, unfortunately, um, through earnings. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still it's still a cash cow. I mean, it's still IBM, but just be real careful. I wouldn't hold it through earnings. Sell it before earnings. Wait till, on the other side. If it's good, then buy it back. So. Oh, hey, Wendy. Um, <laughs> I have double effect watching, watching the market. <laughs> double witching. Okay, um, this is a good question. This comes from Wendy in Calgary, Ontario. I mean, Ontario. God, sorry. <laughs> Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> Calgary, Alberta. And basically, 
uh, the double witching, what is the double witching? Well, as you know, there's different kinds of options. There's, of course, put options and call options, but they have expiration dates. Now, most the most common options have monthly expirations. They expire every month, typically, uh, typically on the third uh, Friday of every month. Now, there's also what they call quarterly options, which expire every quarter, the third Friday of every quarter. So, and then there are weekly options. So, this being July 17th, this is the, um, let's see, this is the end of, let's see. No, this is not a double because a double would be if it was the quarterly option that, that expired, and that would expire. The first one would expire in, in March, second in June, and then uh, October, and then December. So, yeah, this, is a, this isn't a, this isn't a this isn't a triple witching. It's a double because the the weekly and the and the monthly expire, but not the um, quarterly. So, um, this is a double witching, and it does affect the market somewhat. It affects it less than it used to. They used to only have uh, monthlies and quarterlies. That was typically all they had. Uh, now they have the weeklies on some stocks. So the higher trade stocks, they have those. So it does affect the, the market a little bit. Typically what happens when there, is a, when there is an expiration of an option, it's an option expiration day, is that the, the stock tends to trade down uh, when, uh, the, after the, after the, uh, um, in, in the next, uh, in, in the next day, because basically people hold on to it to see uh, if the option uh, comes or goes, and that's typically on the Thursday, and then they will sell it, uh, sell them the news. So, it typically options tend to be down days in terms of, in, in terms, in, in terms of the stock, and usually that happens on the Friday afterwards. But it, it, it just depends on how. Um, you know, on how, on, on how it's trading. It could be, it, it could be a surprise to the upside too. So uh, that's just a kind of a rule of thumb. Thoughts on Netflix. Wow. You know, I've, I was in Netflix. And I still am in Netflix, by the way. I believe in Netflix. I think they are going to do great things. If you could hold on through there and you weren't shaken out, um, I think you should continue holding. Now, fortunately, <laughs> I got, I got lucky because I bought at the pivot point. And this is why I'm talking about these buy points so much. And it seems like, wow, you know, why is he going on and on and on and on about buy points? Well, the reason buy points are good is because they offer this sort of insurance against these, these snapbacks when you have these snapbacks. Now, typically with most stocks, you do not want to hold them through earnings. I know this violates every law that you've ever heard. You've said, you know, <coughs> people will tell you, you know, buy and hold, buy and hold. Well, here's the thing. It's better to buy a, to buy a stock, hold it up till earnings, sell it before the earnings, let the earnings happen because they can affect the, the stock up or down. And then if the stock is still good, buy it back <laughs> and, and continue on up. This is what I, what I do with most of my stocks. Now, I didn't do this with Netflix. And why? Because I broke one of my rules. I got a little bit greedy, and I had a good call option on it, so I didn't do that. Um, I, I had a stop loss in, but I normally on a stock like this, on before the earnings, the day before the earnings, I will sell, and then I'll wait to see the earnings, and then it'll affect it up or down, and then I'll usually buy it back if it's a good stock. But my thoughts on on Netflix are: it is a quality company, and they are very very important in the entertainment ecosystem now. The theaters just can't. Nobody can go to theaters anymore because of the COVID thing. So I just, I just, and I watch them all the time. I mean, you know, I was watching the, I was watching the Lion King last night. I don't know if you've seen that. It's pretty great. Uh, the Tiger, um, Tiger King, not Lion King. That's Disney. Tiger, the, the um, uh, Tiger, uh, Tiger King, which is, which is just, it's, it's just wild. You, you got to see it, uh, and it's on Netflix. And so I do think that you know Netflix is just going to be it's going to be strong. The, the 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 revenue growth wasn't that hot, but the subscriber growth so subscriber growth for Netflix was tremendous. So I think it's I, I I'm not I'm not selling right now. I'm not selling my Netflix um, at least for a quarter. And I'm, I'll sell it I'll sell it before the earnings this time and buy it back. But you know I don't think it's I think it's worth worth holding on to. So that's my opinion on. Netflix. I, I think it's a great, I think it was an overreaction to be honest. 
Um, what's your take on B N E D? Enjoy your show. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching. Really, I, I I'm love I'm loving the fact that actually people are watching. That's great. Um, B N E D. So hopefully I can bring you some value, so that I'll make money for you and you won't hate me for it. All right. Everyone else will be envious though when you're making money and everyone else is losing money. So. <laughs> Um, Barnes and Noble. Wow. You know, I, I can't get behind Barnes and Noble just because unfortunately I think that Barnes and Noble is the past. And I, you know, gosh, I, I mean, I love Barnes and Noble. I used to go in there and, and all the time, go in there, you know, the, the nice air conditioning because I'm here in Texas and drink the coffee and, and read the books and go and look at the magazines. Great place. I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's gonna. I just, I just, I don't think it's a good enough stock. It has a composite rating of 17. I just, you know, it is on an upward trend, but there's better, there's better, cheaper stocks out there that you can do better in. And I just, I can't recommend it, unfortunately. Now, if you're in it and you're doing well, great, you know, more power to you. But here's the thing: if you end the stock and you have made more than a 20% um, return on it, consider selling your position because. I just don't see this long term being a winner. Um, it's just unfortunately they're they're the best buggy, buggy whip maker out there, but they're a buggy whip maker, and that's an unfortunate thing. Um, thoughts on wind? Ah, wind. I like wind actually. Usually, um, for all you out there, of course, this is the this is the wind casino, the encore. The, you know, if you've been to Vegas, I'm sure you have. Um, the problem with the gambling business is this COVID thing. Uh, people just can't get to Vegas because most of them fly there, you know, and a lot of people just don't want to be on a plane right now. And so even though Wynn is a class act, it's just, I just don't think this is the place to be. I don't think this is the place to place money right now. It just has too many difficulties because of this, this shutdown. Now, if, it, if, if the shutdown ends and it comes back, then I think you could be in it. It's definitely rallied a little bit here up to the 50-day, up to the, um, the 50-day moving average. Let's look at the weekly here. We just look at the weekly chart because that's really the chart. Yeah, this is a downward trending chart. And again, I don't recommend anyone in this, before you buy anything, I always recommend going and getting a weekly chart and then looking at that weekly chart. Is Does it go from the top uh, left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner? If it does, Eh, it's a trending. It's it's trending downward. Don't buy a trending downward chart if you don't have to, please, because you're going to limit your potential for, for you're going to increase your risk and limit your potential for gain. You want to buy a chart that's going like this, okay, from lower left to upper right, and and that and and, and that's on the weekly chart. So always remember before you get and you buy anything, take a look at that weekly chart. Make sure that you have an ascending chart. And not a descending chart. I can't recommend um, Win for this. It's got a descending chart. I wouldn't be in it until it has shown some very, very strong strength. When it goes in the downward direction like this, it's not viable typically until it reaches a higher high, until it's come all the way back up to there. Now, if it goes all the way back up to there and it's moving to a new higher high, that changes the character of it. It's a viable chart. This is not a viable chart currently. I just wouldn't buy this one. Um, my uh, my thoughts on it. Okay, um, think Netflix got a bad. I do too. I think I think Netflix got a bad rep, and I think you'll see the reason that you know the reason I think it did move down is I think a lot of people had you know had bet had had bets that that it was going to move higher. It didn't. It, it it underperformed on the revenue side. Now it overperformed on the subscriber base. So. I just I think a lot of people had you know were um, you know had 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 um, had options on it and the, and and it just didn't perform for them and I do think that's why it's it came down. I think Netflix is going to recover very quickly and go higher. I just I really do. I um, I'm very high on it, and I think that I don't think you're gonna you know I think over even the midterm. You're not going to lose on uh, Netflix. It's probably a good time to buy it right now. Um, I, I'll, let's let's go. I just just for fun, let's go take a look at the chart. I want to look at the chart so that I'm not just speaking out of my you know where. 
Oh, this, I, I'm actually showing you something that makes sense. So let's look at the chart on Netflix, NFLX. And let's, let's look at this chart. All right. And it was pulled up. And just there we go. And I'm going to go for the weekly chart. Uh, yeah, it's it's recovered. It's come right back up. Um, it's come right back up. It was as low as, I think, uh, 477 yesterday. I think it's up almost to... Yeah, it's it's almost back up to <laughs> to where it was. So, yeah, I think uh, this is a very viable chart still. So let's show that chart. This is the Netflix weekly chart, uh, and as you can see, this is the big drawdown. This big um, this this big red bar here came back down here. But you know, I I think it's going to move back over five hundred. Yeah, this you see this tremendous bar. This is a distribution. You see how this this yeah this is a distribution, um, tremendously lots of selling right at the right right at um, right at earnings, uh, yeah this is a definitely um, definitely sell off. Now we're going to take a look. We're going to see the next week to see what it does if it moves uh, if it moves lower uh, and and there's been, and there's sell bars above this line here this um, this uh, fifty day moving average line then we'll know that there's there, there's distribution, there's profit taking. I don't believe that's going to be the case. I think people, once the once this thing readjusts, are going to be right back in this because I think Netflix, um, you know, I think Netflix is a powerful stock, and I think you'll you'll see that. Um, CMG earnings. Wow, good question. Um, let me see if I can give a coherent answer on this one. CMG. G. All right. Let's look at the quote on it. Yeah, Chipotle. This is this is a this is a class stock. I keep forgetting about Chipotle. I haven't been I haven't been in it, but uh, it's it's done it's it's done it's done great things. I'm going to show you the weekly chart here. Um, very very viable, very viable chart. It's up very very strongly today. And let me see when they're reporting or when they're going to report. Uh, the twenty second. So, basically, it's going to report next week. This is a oh, this is good. Here's um, what I'm going to try to do. Here is I'm going to try. Give me a little bit of time on Chipotle because well, I'm going to write this down in my little in my little um, notebook here. I'm going to see if I can look to do a, either a bull or bear call spread on this one. Probably do a bear call spread on this one, just depending. Um, but I may do a bear call spread on this one and, and, and show it to everybody because this is this is going to go through earnings. So, um, yeah, that that might that might work re really really well. So, I'm going to see about that. Thank you very very much. I I do I, I want to study this a little bit more to see what see what the sentiment is on it. Um, I want to I want to see what the sentiment is on no debt. Wow, this is great. Jeez. Yeah, and these guys are doing great because in the COVID thing, because you know everybody is. This is the this is the you know, takeout kings, man. Pizza Hut's doing great too, and you know, and all those stocks. And I think that's going to continue. So wow, um, yeah, it's just it's just a very powerful stock. I want to I want to look at it again. It looks like it has a very nice base. Yeah, this is this looks like a winner. So I don't know if I want to do a bull call spread. On this. I may want to do a bull call spread on this one. And not a bear call spread. I'm going to look into this one. Thank you so much for that. That's a great idea uh, for a spread, and I'm going to see if I can can put that together because I think now when you do a spread, you want to make sure that it's very close to a uh, buyable a buy point, and that's where you want to do a spread on earnings. If you have if you have earnings coming up, it's near a buy point. That's a good place for a spread. So I'm going to look to see if Chipotle meets those criteria. That might be a really good one. Um, really, really good one. Um, oh, can you show us a buying chart? Gosh, well, the way <laughs> the way that works is I don't really have a chart that can that, that that says exactly what the buy points are, but I want you to understand that there are what these things called pivots, and they are available. You can you don't have to calculate them yourself. There is a site called Trading View. T R A D I N G. Let me see if I can bring it up. T R A D I N G V I E W. Let's see if I can. Let me see if it'll bring 
Um, it'll bring it up here. I'm gonna, I have a little account here, so let's see if I can show you a chart of, um, you're asking for my photo. <laughs> okay. Um, do, do, do. Okay. So I'm going to look, we're going to look at, uh, 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 this is screener streams. Wow, this has got some. This really got some nice stuff in here. Look at the chart. Um, okay, so this is Apple. All right. So, anyways, this is the, if you got to fool around with this a little bit. I don't know exactly where to tell you to go, but this is a very good site. It's called Trading View, and uh, they do have a free trial on. This is a chart of Apple, for instance. Um, they have some very, very good charts and somewhere buried in here. And I don't know exactly the pain. There is these things called pivot points and you want to try to buy as close to those pivot points as you can. So this is a way that you can, you can take, um, you can, you can take full advantage. It's called trading view is the name of the, um, is the name of the site. And, uh, I guess I don't think I get a, I don't get a referral on this. I'd love it too. I did. Um, it's a little less expensive. There's a there's a program that I'm going to start using. Probably it's called um, MarketSmith, but it's a lot less. Ex it's this is a lot less expensive. TradingView is a lot less expensive, and it has some very very good stuff on it. So um, that's a good place to find that. H U Y A. Let's look at H U Y A. Thank you so much for for looking at me on on, on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube, please subscribe to me. That would really, really help. Uh, please subscribe um, uh, and, uh, you know, like me and all that stuff. Well, I think you probably like me, but uh, just subscribe on that. That that really does help a lot of things um, for me. So if you could do that subscription, that would be great. H um, H U Y A. So let's see. Come up with H U Y A. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Chinese company, okay. A little bit concerned about that. Um, you know, the biggest issues with the Chinese companies is that they're they're they don't use gap accounting, and that is an issue. Um, I don't know a lot about this company, but based on the chart that I'm looking at, it's streaming gaming. Okay, I like that space. Ninety eight composite rating can't go much better than that, huh? Um, yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy this one directly, but I would, I would definitely. I like the streaming gaming area. Um, I think it's a great area. I, I, I think it's a great area. I would watch this. I wouldn't buy this one, but I, but I would watch this one. It seems to be very volatile. It's off a little bit in after hours, but I can't. Uh, you know, this is not a bad chart. Not a bad chart at all. So um, I would watch this one. I wouldn't buy it. I would watch list it. Um, let's see. Thoughts on CMG. Earnings. Wow, I can't. Sorry about that. <laughs> Got out of my chair there. Um, CMG earnings. So let me look, see what CMG is saying here. Hmm. Oh, it's full earnings. I went through that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna probably do. Um, I'm probably gonna do. Um, see if I can do a, a trade on, um, put together an options trade on that because I think that's good. It's coming up. Um, hey, thanks, uh, Smith. Appreciate it. S C S I Q. Let's look at that real quick. C S I Q. Sorry about that. Kind of weird stuff going on. Here. Canadian solar, huh, interesting. After hours, it's up a little bit. Um, not a terrible chart either. Um, let's look at it. Um, hmm. A little bit low on the volume. Uh, wow, look at that, earnings per share. It's up 734% from last quarter, and it's, it's going to report in... August, August 15th. So the industry group rank is three. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I'd wait until we saw a little bit more. Let's look at the, let's look at the weekly chart here. Uh, okay. Okay. Not, not bad. Not bad. This is probably buyable. 
I'd want to see this at 26 or better on the price. I'd like to see this close with heavy volume, 26 or better. It's not quite there, but it is up 23. Uh, did it close with, yeah, it closed with good volume. Um, I want to see, for this to be viable, I want to see it above 26. I want to see it close on heavy, heavy volume over this this 40-day moving average. And I think you might have a, you might have a buyer there, one, one that you can buy. Um, right now, it's I, I'm a little concerned because in January, it peaked up here at about 26. I want to see it move above this 26 mark on the price before buying it to see if it's strong enough. It's got to be strong when you buy them. Uh, but uh, I think it's definitely a watch list. Yeah, very good. Um, ah, why is Amazon going down? Please. Yeah. Well, the reason I believe Amazon is having so much difficulty is because it's run up so much, not because it's bad in any way. I think this is sort of a a sympathy sell-off to, you know, what happened with Netflix. I really believe that. Um, you know, things don't go up forever. Now, is it gonna is it gonna go down a lot? I don't know. But uh, A M Z N. I'm no. I'm not. I haven't been trading Amazon. Um, for full disclosure, I haven't been trading it directly. Uh, but you know, at almost three thousand dollars a share, yeah. Okay, so it's 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 peaked there a little bit. All right, so let's pull that back. It, it just may have gotten ahead of itself. Yeah, here we go. This is the daily chart. Let's look at the weekly chart on this one. And uh, you know, really, what they need to do is split the stock, but I don't think they're going to do that. Um, yeah, this is still. It really is. The last time it was really viable as a stock was looks like about April, mid April. When it was in this, when it was in this formation, right now it's just not viable because there's no support yet, and it's obviously moved down. So there, basically, this is this has got to have a base, a basing action, and that's not that's not apparent here. The last base for this was about 2,700, and it's now 2,900. So it's it doesn't have a strong enough footing. Um, that's what I think, and, and it basically it's moved down in sympathy with. Um, with uh, Netflix, so I, I think we're in a situation here where um, you know you don't you want to wait for it to to move back down and see if it forms a base at about twenty seven hundred. That's where you want to be before you're buying it because this one has doesn't have a base. Um, Amazon doesn't have a base, but it's still great stock. So I'm not saying it's not going to go anywhere, but I just it doesn't have a base right now. And that's why I think it is moving in the wrong direction uh, because of that. Boy, what is this? Sorry about that. Um, that's why I believe it's moving in the wrong direction. I have a real itch on my back. So. <clears throat> Domino's is down today. Uh, can you assess a good... Um, is it good to buy call options on Amazon? Well, I don't typically like to buy calls when the stock is <clears throat> moving down. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on it. I don't really like just to <clears throat> to buy naked calls uh, because you know there's there's no, I like to have a spread. I, I I like to do a spread. I like to buy the low. I I I like to either have a bearish or a bullish spread. And the reason I do is because if you're wrong on the naked call and it goes against you, you lose your whole investment. You don't have any, you, 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 you just, it's not as good. Whereas if you have a spread, you can, you can limit that a little bit. And sometimes that's better. So uh, let me look at the dominoes. That's good. I appreciate that. That's a good comment. Um, I guess it seems to be really good. Thanks. Um, the site you're using. Oh, okay. What I'm looking at, what I'm looking at is uh, investor business daily. It's, it's, pretty much what most of the professionals use as a first source. Now, of course, I haven't totally analyzed everything about the chart, but one of the nice things about the Investor in Business Daily is they go through and they literally screen everything, all the stocks. And and basically, so I can quickly look at the chart. I can quickly look at a few things and give you a general idea of how well the stock is doing. And it's, it's called Investor Business Daily, and it's excellent. Unfortunately, it does it, it is a subscription site. Now, if you're just looking for charts and – you want to get a free site to look at charts. You know, TradingView is really good. Um, they don't unlock some of the features 
um, you have to pay for. So <laughs> as always, but it does have some cool things in there like pivot points and, and all kinds of stuff. So really, really good stuff um, on that. So I've been neglecting everybody here on, on TikTok. I am so sorry that I've done that. Okay. So let's look oh, space options. Ah, okay, cool. Um, space. I haven't been in space since the last earnings. And I, you know, I did, I ate my dog food on that one. You know, what I tell everyone is I, I typically will buy a stock and then I'll wait right before earnings. I'll sell it. And then if it does well, I'll buy it back. If not, sayonara. And that's exactly what, what happened with space. I, um, on the, on the last earnings, uh, basically I was in it right up to the earnings and then I was out of it and it fell and I never looked back. So, um, the thing, the biggest problem that, 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 a Galactic Virgin Galactic has is that um, Richard Branson's airline is bleeding him dry and it's making him a poor man. Unfortunately, uh, space is doing okay, but I'm just afraid he's going to use the, some of the money on space and try to resurrect his I don't know his, his airline. Um, this chart is highly speculative. Um, space uh, Virgin Galactic is a highly speculative um, stock. Let me show you. Let me show you this chart because I think it's very instructive of kind of the deal here. Um, this is the. Let me uh, show you the the daily chart first, and then I'll show you the weekly chart. So here we go. Um, here is the daily chart on this. Now, when I was last in the stock was in February, and this is earnings right here. This is one of the reasons you want to sell before earnings. This blue bar here was the basically the day before earn, the day before earnings. That's where I sold, and then it then it just it went down and it continues to it go down. What the, the event here? The reason it caused this was because the earnings um, did. I mean, they were great, but they, were, they weren't great enough, and so there's this huge sell off. And then we've it's really done nothing since. Now it's starting to move back up here, and these are this is a very good sign. These two, these two uh, strong volume, up on strong volume, it's not bad. So let's switch to the weekly chart to kind of give us a better view of it. Um, you know, we do have, you know, it, it, there was a, there's sort of a cup action in here. It's kind of, it's not really a well-defined one. Um, but I want to see this settle more at the 23 level before I could get really excited about buying this one again. But this is getting into a potential buying opportunity once again and, and and it's a cool stock i mean um it's pretty much the only pure pay in the space business right now so um yeah definitely watch this and i wouldn't buy this until we see some settling and we see a really a stronger chart pattern that we have now for this but i you know i think it's a good stock and i think i think you can make money on it it's just that you have to buy it at a, at a decent level and i think that level is probably about 23.50 but on on higher volume, uh, held for over, few, held for a few days, I think that's where it's going to be for buying that one. So please watch this. Don't buy it yet. Not ready. Um, but um, you know, I think it, I I think space will will uh, go much better. Just be cautious in entering this because the problem with this stock is that it can move lower very very quickly, uh, very very quickly. Um, do you think that Frontier will be bought by another company? I, I, I suppose you're talking about Frontier Airlines, probably. But here's the problem in the airline business for everyone. The airline business is notoriously easy to enter and exit if you're not one of the majors. So I don't really see a lot of value. The only value that Frontier has right now, the only, the only asset that it has really is the fact that it has these gates at a lot of these airports. And with the travel being way down, that's not an issue. Most of the people are trying to give up uh, service to places, not get more. So I don't think so. the airlines just are are going to be a tough a tough row now. If you if you have ten years to invest in the and you could probably make a ton of money. I mean, you know, that's you know that's the kind of Warren Buffett thing. You know, he'll buy and he sit on sit on it for ten years. But I next year for for airlines are not going to be good, and probably the year after them. I don't think they're going to be profitable for two or three years. Um, I'm old enough to remember, remember times when the airlines just basically lost money for several years in a row and, you know, it was terrible. And then, you know, then it picked up. So I think we're going to have another one of those situations. Um, oh, great. You use IBD. This, 
this is really the best site that you're gonna you're gonna have. And you do have to pay for it, but um, I think it's I think it's by by far and away the best uh, if you want to buy. It's what the professionals use. Um, let's see, theater opening the AMC thirty. Well, I hope they do. I you know <laughs> back years ago when dinosaurs ruled the earth, one of my first jobs when I was in high school was as a projectionist at McLean Cinema in McLean, Virginia. No longer exists. One screen. And I loved that job because um, I got to see all the movies for free, and that was great. Um, but the problem is the theater business has been dying a slow death. And, you know, people now have big screens, and they're really good, and you can, you can use Netflix, and you can really get, you know, you can see first-run films now on Netflix, and you know, Amazon Prime. So I just, I can't be excited about AMC or Cinemark or any of the theater companies. I just don't, I think that, you know, they're probably, they're in the buggy whip business, unfortunately. And I think it's going to be very, very tough for them. Um, very, very, very tough for them. So let's see if we, oh, Ellen Smith, thank you very much. Ah, you are, now this is very interesting. You're interested in Ford. I think you know Ford is one of those weird companies that, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them, because I would I would have you know they're kind of radioactive, but I think that Ford may be the exception amongst the big three. They do have a very good electric vehicles program, and their start their their chart is starting to look better than it's been looking in a long time. I want to show you this this chart. Uh, well, I'm going to show you the daily chart, and then I'm going to show you the, the weekly chart. It's still not really a good chart, uh, I, I, and I'll be honest. It's still not really a good chart, but it's not a horrible chart. It's at least trending in the right direction from lower left to upper right. That's a good sign. Now, this is the daily chart, so really you can't tell a lot from that. You have to move to the weekly chart, and you can see we're still down where we were in, in, in March, but it's trending up. So this is a good, this is a good sign. Uh, this is a good sign. Now, can it get back to the ten, eleven dollar range? I believe it can. I believe it can. Um, it's it's got some serious issues, but it's it's one of the few legacy companies that I actually really like, and I think they're they're going to benefit because they're heavy, they're big in the medium duty truck business. There's going to be a lot of demand for electrification in that uh, in that area, and they can build the units. That's the that's the difference with Ford. Um, they can build the units. All these other companies like Neo and all these other electric vehicle companies, most of them don't have the capacity to actually build the vehicles. Uh, Ford does, and I, I think this is an excellent, uh, excellent one. I don't know. I, I, I want to do a little bit more research on this to see if I can get a viable chart on this one. I'm going to blow this up and see if, we, if, if, uh, if I can see any buy points on this. But I think you're on the right track here. Um, I, I do think that Ford... This is this would be a good play because this is a very big area. I mean, if Ford can make the transition at least partially to electric vehicles, I think that they have a fighting chance. I still don't like a lot of things on this chart that I'm going to show you. And here's here's what I'm going to show you what I don't like on this chart. And let me blow it up here now to show you. Um, here's the thing: it is it's still a downward trending chart. I just don't like a downward trending chart. Also. Also, the 40-day moving average has dropped below the 200-day moving average. That means there's disinvestment going on. But it looks as if we're getting some life here. You can see these are these are these are strong buying uh, buying signals here. This is a weekly chart, so this isn't just a fluke. People are buying these, and it's, and it's up to the um, up to the 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 40-day moving average here. So we're seeing it. We're seeing we're seeing increased interest in this, probably from uh, probably from institutional investment. It's still I still don't like this chart. I, I really would prefer to buy this at above twelve dollars, but um, I think this is a very very good watch list because I think if it does move above, if it does trend up and and the two hundred day drops below, I think we you know we might have a real winner here. So this is a watch list. This is not a buy. But it is a very good. It is, it's it's potentially a very good. Uh, things can possibly happen. Xilinx. Um, Xilinx is a good chip company. Um, let me just pull this up really quick here. Uh, let's see. XL uh, NX Xilinx. 
see what happens there. Yeah, 100. Nice. Um, very a good chart. Good chart on this one. Let's pull it to the weeklies. Take a look here. Oops, they give it up to me. Yeah, still in the dailies. Let's see if I can get a weekly chart here. Up. But the daily the daily chart looks good. It's it's still a little bit, but this is one of the reasons why I use the, the weekly chart. It's still a little bit, a little bit weak, but it definitely is trending the right way. It's moved above the 40-day moving average. Now, let me just for, for all you chart readers out there, this is a very good bullish sign. When the red line, this is the 40-day moving average, crosses the black line, this is the 200-day moving average, that means that there is pressure moving into this. It looks like there's a, a reinvestment. It's still, I still don't like the chart and to here, but 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 when it breaks and it moves higher, I think it's I think it's moving higher, and I think you might have a pretty good chart here. It still doesn't have a lot of relative strength. 51 is not a great relative strength number. Um, it is moving up. There are better there there are better leaders in this. AMD is a better is a better chart. Let me pull that one up. Um, it, it's a better chart than Xilinx. Uh, is um, but it's not Xilinx is not a bad chart. It's just that it's just that AMD is better chart, and it's less expensive. So, I I would go with AMD over Xilinx. I just I just would. I, I just think it's a better chart, and and AMD is starting to make a move, and I think it's going to move move higher. Uh, I think I think AMD is going to move higher. So let's look at the way, weekly chart on AMT. I'm going to blow that up a little bit so we can see it uh, here. There we go. All right, so let me just make it bigger so that everyone can see it. And this is the weekly on AMD. And you can see, this is what I'm talking about, everybody. You want to buy a chart that's moving from the lower uh, lower left to the upper right. That's definitely the case with AMD. It's also the 40-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average. That's excellent. That's bullish. It also has a much stronger relative strength this relative strength here is 86 that means it's it's in the top 14 percent of all the stocks it also has very nice um, let me pull that off so you can you can see that behind that let's see if I can pull that away yeah there we go um, the volume is trending down a little bit here but still still quite excellent so if as opposed to if, if I was looking at xilinx or I was looking at AMD I have to be a buyer of AMD over Xilinx. And I'm just about at the end. Yeah, it's an hour, so I've got to, I'm, I'm going to have to, going to have to um, go away here pretty quick. Are you an investor? Yes, I am an investor, but not in Apple. Do you think Apple will split again? Possibly. Um, JCPenney, no, don't get out of JCPenney. It's a bankrupt company. Please don't, don't, no bank, no JC Penny. Yeah, I purchased Tesla um, at 1760 and now it's 1500. Should I hold on or sell and avoid it for a little less? Here's what you should do if you are in at 1750. If you follow my rule, uh, my rule is you always put in a stop loss at 8% of what you purchased the, um, you, you, is of what you purchased the stock for. So, in the case of um, Tesla, you probably should sell the stock now and then wait to buy it again uh, when it's on an uptick. Um, I wouldn't. I don't think though. I, I think with Tesla because I'm in Tesla myself. I don't think it's going to move back down to a thousand. Um, the, the normal rule would be if you're if you're if you're down more than eight percent in the stock, sell it and um, and wait. Um, I don't know if you want to do that. Um, you're you're a little bit high though, 1760. The 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 pivot, and there isn't really a pivot on on, on Netflix. I think is it about. Um, I think I think that I think the support, at least in the near term, on Tesla is at about 1350, 1375. So, I think it could fall back down to there. I think it probably will fall back to about 1400, 14. 1375 before it finds some some legs again. So I, you know, I don't think that you probably want to exacerbate your loss. I would probably sell it and wait for it to move back up, and then I would buy it on the uptick, and that's what I would do for for Tesla. 
uh, because I do think at 17, it's, you're getting a little ahead of itself now. If you if you're taking a longer term view, if you if you can hold on to it for at least till the end of the year, then it's probably going to go over 2,000. Uh, Tesla is, but you know it, it, that's up to you. That's how you have to uh, how you have to play it. What I do is if, if 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 it backs off like that, I will always sell it. That's what happened the other day on Monday. Basically, that's exactly what I did. I had a stop loss in. I was stop. I bought at at nine ninety seven, and then uh, basically, I was in it for about twenty days, and then I sold out at sixteen fifty five on the down, at, uh, with with uh, with a stop loss. But then I came right back in um, yesterday. I well, let's see, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was the day. It was uh, it was the day before. It was the day before. Yet no, it was yesterday. No, it was the day before yesterday. No, it was Thursday. That's right. I came right back in at fourteen. Um, at, at, at 1480 uh, and I came right back into the stock so um, so I'm very bullish on on Tesla but I, I, I do think that you know it's gonna it's gonna train around the range and I, and I do think it may go lower before it sees support I think it's gonna see support about 1350 so I have thank you everybody I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend I know I'm gonna have one and I'll be back on Monday with Dallas Trading for and again, if you want to get on the trade alerts list, um, you know it's it's super easy. I'm going to put the um, you know put the thing up on the screen. It's it's basically Dallas Trading Floor, and oh, there we go. Okay, come on. <laughs> All right, it's it's Dallas Trading Floor dot com. And if if you're looking at me on a TikTok, just go to my profile, hit the hit the a link, and it links right to the subscription for um, for the for the free trade alerts. So I hope to see you all on Monday. I'll be on at two thirty. Hopefully, I was a little bit late today. Okay. Uh, oh, last one. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I'm um, sorry. Sonos. Thanks. Sorry about that. Because I because I, cause, cause I I'm trying to maintain a schedule, but you know I, I I I could go all night literally on this. I love this stuff, and you know it's just I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cut it off somewhere, but let's take a look at Sonos. Uh, S um, O N O S. Let's look at the chart of that. Okay. Yeah. S O N. Okay. Let's look at the chart on Sonos. It's off a bit today. Still not a bad chart, though. Um, let's just think. So let's go to the weekly. And show you what I've got. Okay, so here we go. Um, here's the thing about Sonos uh, as a stock. Um, it's it's moved up very nicely from the March 23rd sell-off. Uh, it's still not it's still not where I like it to be. It's 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 moved off a little bit. I think that this is possible potentially buyable above 17, but right now it's a watch list because I don't think it's shown enough strength. Um, I don't think I don't think it's shown enough strength yet. Uh, earnings are coming up on August fifth, so there we go. I would want I would probably I might be in the stock if it if it if it closes above seventeen dollars on strong volume, then for about yeah on strong volume, then then I could possibly be in the stock. But right now it's a watch list, but it it, it does have a nice pattern. And I think that it's definitely a watch list. So that's that's my view on it. I wouldn't buy it now. I'd wait and see if it can hold about the 1725 line. If it can, then it's probably a good buy. Um, and uh, on that, thank you for the question. And, oh, last one. <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. But free stock alerts, DallasTradingFloor.com. And I will see you all on Monday at 2.30.